Welcome to Madison City's channel, Know Your Candidates Interviews, co-sponsored by the League of Women Voters of Dane County. I'm your interviewer, Joy Cardine, and I'd like to introduce Mike Jacobs, running for the State Assembly in District 46. Please tell our viewers what educational, occupational, and civic experiences you have that qualify you for this office, including your experience working with diverse communities. Okay, wow, there's, there's a lot to unpack there. Um, so let's see, you said education, occupation, and experience with diverse communities? Yes. Okay, <laughs> so my education, I have a, a degree from Ball State University um, teaching multicultural education. I have a master's and a PhD in US history uh, from Marquette University, and my specialty is in tolerance movements and racism. Um, Occupational-wise, I've been an educator for 30 years. Also, I worked for the, um, uh, the Workforce Development Board of Milwaukee County. I was the assistant to the CEO and the director of youth services. So I've had a, a great deal of experience there. Um, I went to high school in Gary, Indiana. These are, I mean, diversity is something that's just, you know, naturally um, been a part of my life because of, of who I am. Um, did I cover all the bases there? Civic okay. experiences was the one we missed. Oh, okay. Well, I can still cover that. I've been on the city council for, um, in Sun Prairie for eight years. Um, I got, I got into, I was wringing my hands for a long time, not liking what was happening. And then I finally decided that it was time to do more than complain and make donations. What specific changes would you support to ensure voters are able to cast their ballots and have confidence in the outcomes of our elections? What experiences have you had with election administration that informs your response? Now, I've, I've volunteered at the polls um, plenty of times. Um, I'm an elected official, so I can't get paid to. I just do it when we're short people, which is oftentimes. And we're becoming more short of people because they don't like the attitude of some of the voters who are coming in, who are making questions about the validity, et cetera. Um, but, uh, but this whole question about the validity is concerning to me. There's, there's lifetime politicians and conspiracy theorists who, without merit, I think cast doubt on our elections. And they do so, I think, for regrettable political purposes. Um, I wish these people who hated elected government would step away from it. Um, instead of investing monies that tout, promote, and let's say entertain this bugaboo, which is which they know not to be true, monies should be allocated to promoting participation. Uh, this state has invested in suppressing the vote while claiming to secure it. Um, instead of focusing on expanding engagement and promoting empowerment, which is of course, as you know, necessary in a participatory government, um, it's clear that they fear the results. This shell game is believed only by those who truly want to believe it or can't be bothered to learn otherwise. I mean, we know what Wisconsin did 10 years ago. We were, you know, it, we jeopardized, according to an N NAACP um, study that was verified by university, I don't remember if it was Cornell, 300,000 voters um, would, would be um, cast away because approximately 24 people had voted fraudulently, or at least had been indicted, maybe even not even prosecuted. In, in 2011, Wisconsin is the only state in the country in 2011 to institute photo ID restrictions on when and where you could register and increase the duration of the residency requirement in order to vote, making a minimum of 30 days. No one in the country did this. We were the only ones. We should be using monies to figure out how to get more people to vote, not to be worrying about the potentially two dozen people who do so illegally and are generally caught. Do you think Wisconsinites have adequate access to affordable health care services, including reproductive health and abortion care? And what should be the legislature's role? Okay, well, the men in the legislature should keep their mouth shut. Let me let me start with the abortion one because I think that you know everyone's anticipating this question. And I think that we're all gonna have you know the same answer. Um, so let me say succinctly, I oppose this attack on gender equality and health care equity. Let me start with that. Now, that being said, now what? You know, we can tear off our sleeves and bark at the moon, and that's not going to get us anywhere. Um, it's not going to move Wisconsin Republican legislature. So what will? I think that regarding this specific health care issue, and then I'll talk about others as well, we should try a two-prong approach. With one hand, appeal to the legislature about being governed by a 19th century law when people drove wagons and not cars. Explain how this won't actually eliminate abortions, but create 
Instead, an abortion tourism industry, it will turn honest people into criminals, just as prohibition did, because people will continue to do this. Abortion pills, which, as you know, account for the majority of abortions, will become successful contraband in Wisconsin and will increase illegal drug activity and organized crime. We'll see this as an avenue to prosper. The networks already exist, and we will now have good people complicit because they want to make sure that women have adequate health care. And of course, health care costs will skyrocket, increased troubled pregnancies, pregnancies coming to term, and increased pressure to assist new mothers now that they've been made to have babies. Will the pro-life people, and I, who I know many, and they're good people, but will they be entering the foster parent realm? I seriously doubt it. And this whole pick yourself up by the bootstraps detachment and is, is not my problem kind of reality they face. I would appeal that even Trump concedes that they will lose suburban voters. And with the other hand, I will appeal, well, we will appeal to suburban women voters. Democrats taking the legislature is an answer in our state. I, I'm concerned for the future healthcare questions that my daughters are gonna face. That, that means something, okay? Now, if I, I still have a little bit, oh, I'm gonna spend a little bit more time on this one and I'll spend less on another one. Um, there's multiple solutions to our healthcare um, costs and approaches that we need to pursue. Now, last year, you may know, Republican leaders in the state rejected a billion dollars from the federal government for Medicaid expansion. It's unconscionable and should be, each, each person who voted for that should be removed from office. We'll continue to pay into a system and Americans from 38 states will benefit from our dollars, but we won't. Only four states north of the Mason-Dixon line have not joined and we're one of them. That's an embarrassment. What do you think is required to improve outcomes for students in public schools, including those with disabilities? As a legislator, what would you do to advance these measures? Okay, so let me start then with, with inequity. Students in urban and rural schools simply do not receive the same opportunities as students in affluent areas. If we're going to allow this to happen, we should surrender the fiction of equality and say, oh yeah, everybody has an equal chance because that's simply not true. We need to adapt a funding apparatus that more evenly distributes resources. And that, by the way, is even more true for special education. Now, of course, education is something that I studied in school. It's something I've been doing for a long time. So this is a topic that really, you'll get me going on for a long time. Um, you know, demagogues like to talk about failing schools. In most cases, it isn't the school that's failing us. It's we who are failing the schools. We're not funding them. We expect schools to solve problems that are beyond our support and beyond their mission. And then we complain when that doesn't happen. <clears throat> well, blame is to be had. It's on us. It's on us, the citizens. Most teachers, as you know, are devoted and they see their position as a vocation, something that they're dedicated their life to. They deserve our support. And if the exodus from the profession continues, indeed, we will have failing schools and we'll have no one to blame but ourselves. The vast majority of problems in schools don't originate in schools. They're imported from outside school walls. What specific strategies do you support for ensuring clean water for all Wisconsinites? <laughs> well, clean water is another good question. I'm a member of the Sierra Club, the Audubon Society, and also um, at the Aldo Leopold Foundation. Well, in our state, okay, the evisceration of the DNR 10 years ago serves two purposes for those who design this. In immediate cost savings, which is how they pitched it to people, and the creation of a climate in which businesses were told that rules to protect the environment would not, and with the purposeful slashing of funding, could not be enforced. The DNR employees who stay to protect our land and our wildlife and our water, they're heroes. We're still undoing the damage caused by the former DNR head who earned a zero rating, zero rating from the head of the DNR from conservation groups and who, quote, relaxed pollution laws and their enforcement. For urban air quality, Wisconsin ranks 20th in the nation. For drinking water quality, we rank 24th. These middle of the pack rankings should be unacceptable to Wisconsin. I would like to give every member of the legislature a copy of the Sand County Almanac as required reading. What legislation would you support to see that guns no longer get into the hands of those who would do harm with them? 
So I'm going to give you a broader answer on this because this is one of the many mistakes that I say Democrats have, have made. It's a skill Republicans are good at, which is couching the framework of how we have these discussions. If you read the Second Amendment, it's very short and it's very simple. And what it allows is for a well-regulated militia. So if you're not in a well-regulated militia, then owning a gun is a privilege like a driver's license or any other licenses states issue. And I favor issuing licenses for guns. I, I absolutely favor it. But the type of guns that we're talking about to protect you from the overthrow of the government, well, let me tell you something. The British aren't coming, okay? If you wanna, if you wanna wear a powdered wig and, and a muscle-loading musket and a single-fire pistol, that's fine. Those weapons are absolutely fine. But the kind of weapons that we're talking about, not plausible. We've had some good luck that, um, and they've admitted that this is why. Republicans, some in the Senate who feel safer have been willing to vote for greater restrictions on the national level. We need to do the same thing in Wisconsin. Most gun holders, the vast majority of gun holders in Wisconsin are great people who use them to hunt, but would need to eliminate the opportunities of, of mass killings, um, especially of young and vulnerable people. What opportunities do you see to work across the aisle on issues important to your constituents? Yeah, well, I think that's, that's where I, um, I think this is where I shine. I think this is what I do best is, is the idea of working across the aisle because you know what, I, I've, the people across the aisle are the people that I've known my whole life. You know, there's, the people, there's my family, there's the people I, I grew up with. You know, some will say, you know, I'll give it the old college try or they'll say, well, I'll, you know, I'll, I'll show them that my way is the right way. Well, you know what? Republicans have been voting against their own interests for the last 40 years. So I don't see that changing. So if you're looking for someone, I, you know, if you're looking for someone just to, you know, say, gosh darn and wring their hands, those darn Republicans, I'm probably not the right person. But here's what I can do. I know how to speak their language. I, I like I said, I've known them my whole life. I've read them my whole life. Not only have I known my whole life, I read their periodicals. I know what they want to accomplish. I wonder if there's anybody else in the race who reads Empower Wisconsin, the Badger Institute, the American First Policy Institute, the Wisconsin Conservative Digest, Wisconsin Right to Life. I start by using their language. Now, this isn't the group that I mentioned. But as I mentioned in my introduction, I've been reading right-wing, white-wing literature my entire adult life. I'm an expert on this. I know their tricks. I know their methods. I can expose them, and I can use it against them. But I think you have to re recognize that, for the most part, we have more in common than we have apart. And that's where we need to start. We need to start where we have things that we can agree to accomplish. I wouldn't have run for this office if I didn't think I could do that. What would you like to say to the viewing audience as we complete this interview, including any priorities that have not yet been identified? Okay. Well, you know, I <clears throat> I want to say one more thing about education, then I'll just, you know, make the what you're saying the standard closing remarks. And that is in this state, we have gone from a state-sponsored education system to a state-supported one. And if you talk about vouchers, then maybe it's a state-inclined one. Um, in vouchers, of course, I oppose any scheme that's meant to derive to deprive our already struggling public school system of funding of any more funding. But the economy, employment, education, environment, energy, equity. I have worked for the work the largest workforce development board in the state. I am an educator, UW Platteville full professor. I am the creator and chair of the sustainability committee in Sun Prairie. I've been a member of the Sun Prairie Utility Commission for several years, and I'm a certified facilitator for everyday democracy. Um, so I, I check all the boxes in this respect. But again, my greatest qualification has been my ability to work across the aisle while not in the majority. I think every other candidate has been in the majority, and that's certainly much easier. Um, we shouldn't anchor where we diverge, but start where we agree. There's much that can be accomplished. If I didn't believe this, again, I would see little purpose in serving. We're much more alike than different. Um, this has been lost on too many who are interested in government leadership. I have the endorsement of every city council president in the last nine years, Democrat and Republican in Sun Prairie, and the office rotates annually. So remember to vote August 9th. Everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Joy. Thank you, Mike Jacobs, for speaking with us. And thanks to the viewing audience for taking the time to know your candidates. I want to remind everyone that election day for those candidates involved in a primary is Tuesday, August 9th, and the fall election is on Tuesday, November 8th. On behalf of Madison City Channel and the League of Women Voters of Dane County, thank you for joining us.